Welcome to the DigitalLifestyle.com video show. Now the video that we've got coming up is on the Sony XL103 Mi Center PC, equipped with Blu-ray. And I recorded the video and mentioned in the video that I didn't have a Blu-ray disc to try. Uh, so since then, I've been to a blockbuster store and rented a, a Blu-ray film, which is Pirates of the Caribbean. So what I thought I want to do is show you a little how that works and uh, the difference between sort of sticking an old DVD and a Blu-ray, which I must admit is not a great deal of difference. And there's not much difference to see through the camera, the audio and video quality, because obviously you've got the uh, the camera and the compression and everything that I'm using on the video. But I thought it would give you a nice idea. And also in the video I mentioned the price. And the price that I mentioned is for the non-Blu-ray version. As of yet, I'm not sure the Blu-ray price, so I'll include a link for that in the show notes for more details on that. So the price mentioned in the video is just for the standard device. Okay, so here's the video, and then when the video is finished, uh, it's going to go on to the Blu-ray effects. Welcome to the DigitalLifestyle.com video show. It's been a while since I've done one of these shows, and on this show we're going to be looking at the Sony via Media Center PC. You may remember a few shows back on the Media Center show, I interviewed Sony and we talked about some of their Media Center products and TP1 and uh, the other products. And here we have one of the Media Center PCs. I'm going to be looking at this and going to some more details on it. It's a Blu-ray machine. Uh, we'll have a look at some of the spec that's on the on the PC. It's a nice looking machine, you can see, and we've got uh, a very nice uh, keyboard, um, which is really nice in operation because unlike the Microsoft keyboard, which have got the MediaSense keyboard, as you've seen that the little trackpad, little stick on there, this has got a proper trackpad on there, uh, so you can see that. So it's actually usable and uh, works great for MediaCenter and for using it as a as a Windows device. And it's got its uh, own remote, which is quite a big, sort of clunky remote. Uh, but it's got the Media Center logo on it. Is there? You can see the Media Center button to get things started off. Um, it's quite big and uh, not quite as slick as the other Media Center machines. Uh, there you go. You can hear the, the box has just started up. I've just rebooted it. Uh, so I'm going to have a look at some of the functions on it on the, my screen, which is Sony Bravo uh, connected up via HDMI. And including the audio as well. So I'll show you some of the functions on that, then we'll have a look more at detail at the box itself. Uh, first first opinions are a nice looking box, great to connect up, just plugged it in with one HDMI cable and network the power and that's it, everything's up and running on it uh, with the wireless keyboard uh, mouse on there. I've not got any other peripherals plugged in. So I'm going to move the camera around as we look at the various different elements of the device. Here's the Media Center PC itself. I see it's a nice slim unit and uh, next to the Xbox 360 you see it's fairly small as well. Um, it's got a nice back panel which we'll have a look at later and here I'm going to show down on the front panel. We've got um, the expansion points on there, we've got USB on the front and audio and video output and the connect button there for the mouse and the keyboard. And you can hear it's probably uh, fairly quiet if you can hear a PC noise in the background that is my own media center PC and not this one so you see following up there we've got the HDMI cable I'm going straight up here into the into the TV and uh, as you can see it's nice bright colors and I've not got the audio connected uh, my audio normally goes through my uh, surround sound system but we're just using the HDMI cable for audio and if I go a little closer you can see it's just connected up uh, it is a nice uh, clear picture and uh, first issue you may see over here is the uh, Vista Star button is uh, not in the right position. And I think that's just because the screen resolution is not exactly matched up to the TV. Okay, so I'll put this thing back on the stand and we'll have a look at, uh, at the machine. Okay, so I'm um, zooming up looking at the screen now, so I'm going to get out of your way. I'm going to look at some of the functions of the vial. I've uh, loaded media center up, and uh, first of all, I thought we'd have a look at is, is some of the 
extra functions that are in media center. So first we've got this uh, via our browser, via our media player and with DVD which is the Blu-ray edition. Uh, I haven't got a Blu-ray disc so I can't really show you that although I've seen it at CES and, uh, and you've you seen it on the videos so it is very clear. So this browser is effectively a web browser that uh, Media Center shells out from and gives you sort of a 10 foot way of browsing the internet so you can see here it's going through and uh, looking at uh, AOL's uh, the start page and you know, we can go through and say look on motor and I'm just using the uh, the vial keyboard here to to browse around that okay that looks very nice and uh, you can use the remote control and you can see the colors just at the bottom there uh, for navigating around but what I found is because she sure she shelled out a media center but also as you can see if I uh, I go back to the desktop, I can just as easy load uh, Internet Explorer and operate it that way. Because the keyboard is so good that. There we go, let's. Because the keyboard is so good and on this screen it's nice and bright and nice and clear, uh, this is a really nice way of uh, browsing the internet. Now the cursor seems a bit big and I guess that's because we've got this living browser open so let's close those down. Ah uh, yeah, we've got the normal cursor on there now. So you can see the um, sort of browser, the normal web browser is pretty good for uh, browsing and I can sit on the sofa and browse. So that is quite nice and obviously one advantage I've got over and the Xbox 360 is I can do this as well as uh, the media center stuff whereas of course on my own machine on my uh, 360 and I've just got the the basic media center stuff on installed on there. Go back to media center because uh, we've got all the usual stuff for media center and what I'm going to do now is play some content from my other uh, media center PC my main media center PC so I'm going to uh, Let's find some good uh, fast stuff and um, we'll have a little bit of So I'm going to load some content. Okay, so I've got some of my favourite content here. Uh, running on Media Centre PC. So this is actually on my main Media Centre PC that's connected by Ethernet. And uh, first of all, you'll notice that, of course, obviously you've got a great picture on there. And uh, we'll let the watch to start this. But we can skip forward and backwards without any major issues. Um, with lags that people have mentioned before when streaming between different media centers PCs. As you can see, there's no major issues with lag. Maybe through the Xbox, it's slightly quicker. But as you can see, that you know, there's no, there's no uh, issues playing that content, and all the nice things work. So in there, uh, I can use the Windows tab function, have that playing. In a window, and uh, and still carry on using the using the machine. So you can see really that the machine is not particularly stressed hard by the uh, playing the, the content, and it is quite nice to be able to do that. And of course, one thing which is quite nice, which you can do, you can stick Media Center in a window, and then uh, you, know, you can leave that running while carry on browsing. So you notice a little bit of jittering there as it catches up, but overall uh, no major problems. So that's running Media Center, you can see that the device runs really nicely. Um, so let's have a look at some of the content on there now. I've changed the content on there now, something a bit different. Let's go have a look at the actual uh, specifications of the machine. So let's first have a look at the Vista Index on there. So you can see there, the Vista's performance is pretty good overall. It's got 5 on the CP, CPU, 5.5 for the RAM, 5.9 for the graphics, 5.3 for the gaming graphics, and 5.9 for the machine.